hello 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 everyone and welcome to my youtube channel if this is your first time here welcome back to my youtube channel if you've already been here if this is your first time here please take the time not only to like this video give it a thumbs up and leave a comment but make sure that you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so every time that i upload new podcasts and new content you are made aware so today's topic of discussion if you read the title of this video, if you saw the thumbnail of this video, will be none other than Wendy Williams, in her opinion, of Meghan Markle's synopsis of being a newlywed, being a royal, and being a mom. Okay, so about two days ago, Wendy Williams' show aired, okay, and she essentially gave her opinion of Meghan Markle's response in her documentary that she's had with prince harry and in the interview during the documentary megan pretty much goes over how hard it has been being a newlywed being thrust into the royal elitist dynamic being a mom having a baby and the public scrutiny that comes with that the media scrutiny that comes with that on the British perspective as well as the westernized American perspective and Wendy was just not here for Meghan Markle's tears she was not empathetic whatsoever and essentially what she stated was Meghan should have known what she signed up for marrying a royal and she also had to put in and add into that commentary on her show that Megan actually had reached out to her for a job before she married Prince Harry or got engaged to Prince Harry when she was still working I believe the show was on called Soups and she basically had one of her employees that works for the show come on camera and co-sign that Meghan Markle hit them up for some employment before she came up and married Prince Harry. Okay, so I am going to not, I'm not going to get into the Wendy Williams commentary and I'm not going to play that. What I am going to play for you is the CBS Morning interview of Meghan Markle's makeup artist from her wedding day who knows her personally and what he has to say about it. And I'll be back with the rest of my commentary and I'm going to warn you right now and give you the disclaimer right now. It's going to be an unpopular opinion. That's the reason the podcast is called Unpopular Opinion. So I'm giving a disclaimer now and don't say I did not tell you. But before we get into that, I want you guys to hear this because everybody has heard Wendy Williams commentary. So I think it's time to hear someone close to Meghan and Prince Harry and hear exactly what's taking place. The revealing new documentary, Harry and Meghan, An African Journey, the royal couple share the personal struggles and emotional pain they've been hiding. For the first time, Meghan Markle discussed the intense media scrutiny she's faced since marrying Prince Harry and having baby Archie. You add this on top of just trying to be a new mom or trying to be a newlywed. It's, um, yeah, well, I guess, and also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay. But it's, uh, it's a very real thing to be going through behind the scenes. And the answer is, would it be fair to say not really? Okay. And it's really been a struggle. Yes. This morning, we're getting new insight into the life of the Duchess. Meghan Marcel, Markle's close friend and makeup artist Daniel Martin joins us with Tina Brown. Tina, of course, is the author of the Diana Chronicles and has covered the royal family extensively. Welcome to you both. And was there, Tina and I were there covering the royal yes. wedding, so um, we got to see I'm them when they, yeah. <laughs> Daniel, the balcony, yeah. let me start with you. You've known the Duchess for 10 years. What's, what's it been like watching her go through all this? Oh, gosh, it's been really, I mean, to be honest, it's been tough. Um, I feel like this is now, watching this documentary, it's been almost a relief seeing her at a point where she can be honest about what's been happening. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like all of us who have known, we just didn't know what to do or how to help, but I feel like just putting this out there, just letting like it has been challenging. Mm -hmm. It's hopefully demystified a lot that's been going on over there. 
do you think it was helpful for her to do this? Oh, I, I definitely think so. Mm-hmm. Even Lucio. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can see it in her face when she reacts to him. When he asks her that question, she takes a moment, she pauses, and then she goes into it, and you really see that in her eyes. Tina, that kind of vulnerability might play well with, with an American audience. I certainly appreciated seeing it, but you know the, the, the UK media. How does it play there? Well, the UK media is very conservative and very middle-aged. You have to recognize that the tabloids are really, you know, staffed and written by middle-aged kind of white guys on the whole. And they are ruthless about, you know, any blood in the water that they see. You know, a vulnerability means they're going to they're gonna go for it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they like to pretend that they like the stiff upper lip of the British upper classes, which actually they don't. But somehow... You know, as soon as anybody does show any emotion, they really go for it. You know, it's interesting. I reached out to Brene Brown, who's who's a best-selling author, who's written about vulnerability, a researcher. She says, actually, when you do vulnerability, we found that the willingness to be vulnerable is the most accurate measure of care- courage. It takes considerable bravery to take off your armor in a world full of cynics and critics, while it takes very little courage to be a cynic or a critic, which I thought was very well Absolutely. said. Absolutely. So what is it about the UK, though, that when they, people show themselves that way, that they are either belittled, judged for showing humanity. Because even though the stiff upper lip has, de- has is an old, you know, passe thing, yeah. it's still pretty ingrained. The British are much more reserved, you know, by nature than Americans are. I don't think people here realize the degree to which their story, Harry and Meghan's story, is portrayed very differently over there. It's very, it, it, it's very differently. And I mean, you know, Prince Harry is trying to make the point, I am my mother's son. I mean, the interesting thing about Diana was, even though she was an aristocratic girl, she was the first to make that stiff upper lip tremble. She came out and talked about her emotions, and she refused to keep them bottled up. Harry feels that he wants to do the same. He's the same as his mother. He's an emotional man, and he doesn't want to keep it bottled up. And he's wounded by what's happened to his bride. I mean, you know, Meghan has been utterly trashed. And he wants to make sure, he has spoken also very candidly, that what happened to his mother, he does not want to see happen to his wife. It's terrifying. That's why uh, he's, ter- and it is terrifying to even think about that, actually. It makes me very sad to even think, uh, think about how that story could end it, but I don't see that for her. But Daniel, you know, when you see the reaction here, it's very different. What are you hearing? Because uh, there's a Maya Angelou poem called Yeah, Still someone did this incredible uh, video um, compilating a lot of Megan's videos and uh, Maya Angelou reading um, And Still I Rise. Still I Rise. And it's just this beautiful mashup and it started circulating and it really got a lot of people thinking like, wow, we, she can come up from this. Yeah. And Absolutely. I think just making that acknowledgement really helped open the world and understand what she's been going through. Would you role... call her a weak person? No, it, not, at, not all. at all. Yeah, not at all. I wouldn't either. What role do you think race plays in this in the UK media? Look, I think, I think there is racism uh, and a rising misogyny, by the way, in the UK. Probably classism and, too. I mean, I think that Brexit England is an ugly place. Actually, there's a lot of anger, a lot of misogyny, a lot of sort of people in a kind of, you know hatred of foreigners you know there's a, there's a lot of bad stuff happening yeah, right do now you, in the do you think these lawsuits are going to quiet things down no i i think uh they stirred up the media tremendously i i th- okay so you guys heard that and i'm not going to play the whole thing i will leave the link in the description of this video but let me give my commentary on what was said in this interview and why I feel like this interview is very, very important. Okay, so number one, we're going to start off with the Wendy Williams commentary, okay? I think that Wendy Williams was flat out wrong for her delivery of this scenario, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. Because it hasn't even been six whole months Okay, since Wendy has been boohoo crying all over the news, okay, all over the blogs, all over TMZ, every time she pulled up to an interview about her tumultuous dynamic between her and Kevin Hunter, her estranged husband, and his um, side chick for I don't know how many umpteen years, and his brand new baby, okay, she was a mess. She was a hot ass butter biscuit church's chicken 
mentally unstable mess. And as a woman, okay, because see, this is the thing. I feel as though women are put underneath so much scrutiny, so much pressure. We're constantly judged for the things that we do or the things that we don't do or the decisions that we make or the decisions that we do make. And nobody more than Wendy Williams should be able to empathize with Meghan Markle, especially after all the media scrutiny she's been in for the past, I'm going to say year. Okay. Because we're at what the end of October and B Scott, I believe broke that story of Kevin Hunter side piece having his alleged side baby, I believe that was in the winter time, somewhere around like January, February. So all year you have been scrutinized within the media, okay, all over the blogs. Um, it has affected your son in college at this point. You can't, you couldn't even um, get through a show or you weren't even able to be on your show for like what? I think weeks up to like months at a time, you know, so... I don't, I don't, I really don't think that her commentary was empathetic whatsoever. And I feel as though as a woman who's been scrutinized heavily by the media, no one should have been empathizing more and understanding Megan more than Wendy Williams. So the fact that Wendy did not take that moment to say, Megan, girl, I get it. Megan, girl, I'm a pray for you. Megan girl, I understand. Megan girl, I've been in your shoes. Megan girl, you are me, sis, and sis, I am you. That is the angle that Wendy Williams should have came from with this, especially with the demographic of the Wendy Williams show, who watches the Wendy Williams show. Wendy Williams dynamic and demographic is women, okay? So, Wendy really dropped the ball with this one. And then she had to add her, um, you know, messy commentary with the, oh, she was applying for a job. So what? She was trying to get her coin, you know? And clearly she thought highly of you that she wanted to be a part of your platform. So the way that Wendy went about this situation was definitely effed up to say the least, okay? However, I'm not going to say that Wendy is completely wrong. And this is where the unpopular opinion definitely comes from. I believe that Wendy does have some truth that Meghan Markle should have been, you know, cognizant and aware of the dynamic of the royals and the elitists. Meghan should have been cognizant and aware of Princess Diana and how that turned out. She should have been aware that when you are different from the status quo of the royals, that you will be scrutinized by the media. If you notice, Kate does not get the same scrutiny married to the brother, okay, because she fits the status quo. You mean to tell me that an American biracial woman who's half African American is not going to be underneath any media scrutiny? married to a royal like girl you got to think realistic about it but see this is the thing with women women get too caught up okay women get too caught up in loving men and being in love and the thought of being in love that we are not cognizant and aware of some truths when it comes to loving these men and the truth is is that you need to understand who you are marrying who are you laying down with making these babies with? We w Women are all guilty, no matter from a royal to your cousin who had the fifth baby by her baby daddy, knowing that he got four other kids and she thinking that things are just going to change, that the dynamic is just going to change and they're going to be a family. Come on. Come on. You, you do have to be cognizant and aware of what you are signing up for. And I think that Megan was so blinded or could have been blinded by how she felt about Harry that she probably didn't really think that through. Okay. She probably really did not think that through. You are being, you are basically aligning yourself and marrying a man 
who his mother, her wedding alone, her, her ceremony alone was the highest watched program in history. You don't think that there's going to be any scrutiny. You don't think that there's going to be any scrutiny that you are biracial and American. Like, come on, Megan. Come on. Like, sometimes we got to tell some hard truths and we have to hold ourselves accountable as well. Okay. And I'm pretty much, you know, I'm going to say that she's probably, you know, thought, sat back and thought about that. Like, damn, I probably didn't really think this all the way through, you know, but everything that ain't glitter, that glitters ain't gold. And this is a prime example of that. Um, we also have to understand that the difference of dynamic of the Royals from when Kate got married to his brother to when Meghan married Harry is completely different. Okay. From my understanding, the Royals are not really liked right now in the UK. Okay. As you heard, racism is definitely a thing in the UK. It is not taboo. And not only is racism not taboo over in the UK, you also have to understand the scrutiny of Prince Andrew and the royal family and the royals when it comes to their association with Jeffrey Epstein and what has transpired then, okay? And that was this year. So you got to understand that she is now grouped in and guilty by association by marrying into that family. So again, when you are different from the status quo of the elitist, you will stand out. Princess Diana did not come from a poor background. However, Princess Diana was different from the status quo because Princess Diana actually believed in putting in footwork and working hard and going to school. And if I'm not mistaken, Princess Diana even held a few waitresses jobs. She worked the nitty gritty. She was not cut from the same cloth as Queen Elizabeth and the rest of them. She was basically the, the type that put her, you know, her money where her mouth was. And she wasn't afraid to get her hands dirty. And she wasn't afraid to put in the work. And the fact that she was different from the status quo, right then and there, like, Me Megan just didn't think this all the way through. She really didn't. But I do think that... um the media does need to take a step back. And the same ones who were saying to leave Megan alone were the same ones eating the public scrutiny up. I don't want to hear nothing. When Megan and Prince Harry tied the knot and got married, when I mean to tell you Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, pictures, retweets, it was just a huge spectacle. And let me tell you something. I was one of those people who was not going crazy over this. And this was the reason why. Sadly, because I called this and I said, they are going to scrutinize her because she is biracial. She is not cut from the status quo and she is marrying the son of Diana. So I already knew what was coming with this. I, I did. And it's sad to say, not saying that I wished her bad, I just know how the warriors are and I know they ain't shit. I'm going to be honest and be real. See, a lot of y'all glamorize this shit. If you really do your research, you will know that these warriors ain't shit. Clearly, you see that with the Jeffrey Epstein scandal that these warriors ain't shit. Okay? And Megan just ain't cut from their cloth and now she's realizing that. So, again, I already called that it was going to be some problems. From the beginning due to the cultural differences and the racial differences and it's just sad it really is and the picture is worth a thousand words because when the photos came out of the royal wedding between megan and prince harry you could definitely see that elizabeth was not feeling what was taking place she looked like she was just ready to go but then again, she's wicked. So who knows? Who knows? That's probably just how her face just is. It's probably just stuck like that. But she did not look happy whatsoever. 
that her grandson was getting married. She looked like she wanted to get the hell out of there and she looked as though she had a big disdain for Megan. And when I saw those pictures and I saw her face, I said, oh, we got, we got a problem. We got a problem. They're going to drive this girl crazy. And I said that and I called it. So I want to know what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comment section. Do you feel as though Wendy was wrong for her delivery? Or do you feel as though she's absolutely 100% right? How do you feel about her actually throwing in the comment that Megan actually applied to work for the William Williams show? And what do you think about Megan's makeup artist and basically stating that it was kind of a sense of relief to see Megan finally just be honest. So please take the time to leave a comment. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for tuning into this podcast and I will check y'all in the next one. Peace.